The confirmed number of new coronavirus cases reported in Los Angeles County over the last 24 hours is 1,382 with 48 additional deaths. Here in Torrance, 12 additional cases were reported with one new death. Welcome to COVID-19 Today. I'm Leslie Robbins. It's Monday, March 7th. Indoor mask wearing is no longer mandatory in most settings throughout L.A. County. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention released new data last Thursday, moving the county out of its high virus activity category and into the low category, showing a decreased impact of the virus on the county's health care system. The CDC's revised data allowed L.A. County to issue a new health officer order, removing the longstanding mandate for people to wear masks indoors, regardless of vaccination status. L.A. County Public Health Director Dr. Barbara Ferrer says mask wearing is still strongly recommended, especially in crowded settings or while interacting with people who are at higher risk of severe illness from the virus. Masks will continue to be required in high risk settings, including airports, healthcare facilities and transit centers. Indoor masking at K through 12 schools will continue as well through this Friday, March 11th. At that time, local school districts could decide whether to align with the county and state or to continue mandate masks indoors. COVID-19 has now claimed the lives of more than 6 million people. That global death toll is a sobering reminder that the pandemic is not over, especially during a time when people are shedding their masks. Travel is resuming and businesses are reopening. The U.S. is nearing 1 million COVID-19 deaths despite its vaccine availability. More isolated places such as the Pacific Islands are just now dealing with their first outbreaks and deaths due to the Omicron variant. And death rates remain high in Hungary, Poland, Romania, and other Eastern European countries. The region recently had more than 1.5 million refugees arrive from Ukraine, a country that had poor vaccination coverage and high rates of cases and deaths. Health experts say death rates continue to be the highest among the unvaccinated. The number of those who died from COVID-19 is more than the populations of Berlin and Brussels combined. It can also be compared to the entire state of Maryland. Officials remind everyone that the death toll is actually an undercount because many parts of the world have poor record keeping. Some analysts estimate the the actual number of COVID-19 deaths to be between 14.1 and 23.8 million. The U.S. has the biggest official death toll in the world. Globally, we're at nearly 447 million confirmed COVID-19 cases and more than 10.6 billion vaccine doses have been administered. Moderna reached a preliminary agreement to build a COVID-19 manufacturing plant in Africa. Moderna reached a memorandum of understanding with Kenya to build the facility there. The company plans to invest $500 million to produce messenger RNA. That's the key technology for its COVID-19 vaccine at that location. The goal is to manufacture 500 million doses annually. Moderna says it could begin producing the vaccine doses there as early as 2023, subject to demand. Moderna reached the agreement with the support of the U.S. government. The Biden administration has made increasing vaccination globally a central priority. Moderna pledged 650 million doses of its vaccine to COVAX through this year. COVAX is an international alliance backed by the World Health Organization to deliver the shots to low- and middle-income countries. 
The company delivered 807 million COVID-19 vaccine doses worldwide in 2021. California Governor Gavin Newsom proposed a plan last week to offer more services to a certain group of people experiencing homelessness. His office introduced a program called Care Court on Thursday, which they say is about meeting people where they are and helping to break the pattern that leaves them without hope and cycling repeatedly through homelessness and incarceration. Governor Newsom noted that the state is taking a major step forward to support mental health and fight homelessness through court-ordered services, drug treatment, and housing with compassion. His proposal would require all counties to set up a mental health branch in civil court and provide comprehensive and community-based treatment to those suffering from debilitating psychosis. People would be obligated to accept the care or risk criminal charges if those are pending, and if not, be subject to being held in psychiatric programs involuntarily or lengthier conservatorships in which the court appoints a person to make health decisions for someone who cannot. Secretary of State Dr. Mark Galley expects the program to apply to up to 12,000 people in California, although not all have to be homeless. Family members and outreach workers could recommend a person for a court-mandated program. Gas prices are continuing to go up, topping $7 for a gallon of premium fuel at some pumps in L.A. over the weekend. The price for an average gallon of regular unleaded gas in L.A. County rose 5.4 cents to 5.42. It's 29th record in 31 days. The average price rose 9.5 cents Saturday and more than 12 cents Sunday. It's second largest increase since July 14, 2015. The LA County average price has risen 33 times in 36 days by 76 cents. Gas is 54.3 cents more than one week ago. 68.9 cents higher than one month ago and a dollar 62 greater than a year ago experts blame the war in ukraine coupled with rising inflation at home u.s crude oil spiked to a 13-year high on sunday evening reaching 130 dollars and 50 cents its highest since july 2008 before going back down the international benchmark Brent crude also hit its highest price point since July 2008 over the weekend at $139.13. Experts say oil prices are rising on the prospect for a full embargo of Russian oil and products. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken says the U.S. and its allies are considering banning Russian oil and natural gas imports while making sure there is still an appropriate supply of oil on world markets. Well, airlines, too, are facing the most expensive jet fuel costs in more than 13 years. Russia's invasion of Ukraine last month set off a global panic around fuel supplies, affecting this sector as well, with costs rising 32% last week alone and more than 50% so far this year. Now, fuel is generally the airline's second biggest expense after labor. This is the latest challenge for the air carriers who are expecting a return of travelers as COVID-19 cases decline. Airline stocks have been among the hardest hit industries in recent weeks. United Airlines was down more than 15% today, trading at its lowest levels since November 2020. Delta Airlines fell more than 12% and American dropped almost 12%. The airlines are limited in how much they can trim capacity to raise fares. Analysis predict demand to outpace supply, but say it will not create nearly enough pricing to offset the fuel move. They say it could take months before travelers see the rising fuel prices reflected in their fares. 
at least 20,000 longshore workers on the West Coast say they will no longer load or unload any Russian cargo. The International Longshore and Warehouse Union made the announcement on Thursday, calling it an act of solidarity. The move affects all 29 ports up and down the West Coast. The West Coast dock workers say they are proud to do their part to join with those around the world who are bravely taking a stand and making sacrifices for the good of Ukraine. The decision comes amid the ongoing violent attacks on civilian targets by Russia. As we mentioned earlier, more than 1.5 million people fled Ukraine, creating Europe's biggest refugee crisis since World War II. The union includes the ports of LA and Long Beach. The port of Long Beach also shared this picture of its bridge, lit up in blue and yellow in support of Ukraine. Two Ukrainian organizations in LA got together over the weekend to create a centralized headquarters to help Ukraine. Supporters from all nationalities gathered at the Ukrainian Culture Center on Sunday to help those struggling in the war-torn country. Another massive mission is underway at the Culture Center as volunteers pack thousands of emergency triage kits that will be sent to Ukraine as soon as possible. A Southern California physician created simple kits that are intended to stop bleeding from blast or gunshot injuries. Dr. Dan Olesnicki, a tactical medical trainer who has spent 20 years training local SWAT teams, is preparing to leave for Ukraine with nearly a dozen Southern California doctors, and they hope to train 1,000 new medics. If you're looking for more ways to help, go to ukrainianculturecenterla.com slash how dash you dash can dash help. Department store chain Kohl's will look a lot different soon. It's on pace to open more than 100 smaller format shops over the next four years in an effort to attract new customers. The smaller stores are about 35,000 square feet, less than half the size of its current stores, which measure roughly 80,000 square feet. Kohl's also plans to grow its Sephora business to more than $2 billion in annual sales. It opened about 200 of the Sephora shop and shops inside its brick and mortar locations so far and is on track to have 850 locations up and running by next year. Kohl's chief executive Michelle Goss says the key to its transformation is training customers to think of the company as a top destination for athletic clothing rather than a mall-based department store with mostly women's apparel and home goods. Kohl's reported a revenue of $6.22 billion for the three-month period ending on January 29th. Kohl's is located at the Torrance Town Center on Crenshaw Boulevard by Pacific Coast Highway. Americans are not tipping as much as they did during the earliest days of the pandemic. Recently published data by Square, the digital payment platform, shows that the median tip percentage at quick service restaurants slipped from 22.22% in April 2020 to 18.6% by August 2021. Tips at full-service restaurants also dropped during the same period from 21.2% to 19.1%. The latest tip figures are less than pre-pandemic tip amounts, with quick-service tips averaging 19.73% and tips at full-service restaurants around 19.45%. Square's numbers are slightly below the tip amounts reported by the website creditcards.com. That survey polled more than 2,500 U.S. adults. 75% of them said they always tipped when eating at a full-service restaurant, which was down from 77% in a 2019 survey. The site also noted that in 2019, 
64% of respondents said they always tip their food delivery drivers, but that number fell to 59% in 2021. Analysts suggest that customers may be under tipping because only about 70% of the U.S. population knows that it's customary to leave a gratuity of between 15 and 20%. Chefs and restaurant owners hope patrons can appreciate the unprecedented challenges that the industry has faced during the pandemic and leave more generous tips in the future. Well, before we go at the end of each program, we like to share feel-good stories from our community. Pictures, images, and videos that remind us of how resilient our community is and how Torrance truly cares. Mayor Patrick Fury joined the Southwest Regional Council of Carpenters to give out thousands of KN95 masks to Torrance residents at the Torrance Certified Farmers Market on Saturday. What a great gesture it is. I know a lot of people have been saying, well, geez, we, we're finally past the masking, but we're really not. Uh, they take away the mandates and the requirements, but there's a lot of places where you have to be safe. It's a great feeling to see the, the relief on some people's faces where some uh, couldn't even get any masks, especially any of these KN95 masks. But fortunately for us, through the donations that we have received and through our relations that we have, we're able to reach back to the community like this. And it is a great feeling to see the families being able to get these uh, KN95 masks. This is a chance for us to give back to the community and uh, help those in need, those less fortunate, and to uh, give them what they need to make it through the pandemic. More than 500 members of the Southwest Regional Council of Carpenters live in Torrance. The group has partnered with cities across the South Bay and beyond to give away the free resources that are so important during this fight against COVID-19. What a great way to show how Torrance truly cares. Now, if you have a great story, an upcoming event, a photo or video you would like to share, email us at COVID-19 today at torrenceca.gov. We would love to hear from you. Well, that is our update for COVID-19 today. We will see you back here tomorrow as Rihanna True Tanich brings you the latest. Please be safe, stay healthy, and thanks for tuning in. We will see you next time.